الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد I can't think of another hadith that better symbolizes one of the modern day fitness that we face in this time and it's something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in many a hadith he warned us about listening to dua to jahannam to those people who call to the hellfire and as we are well of from the principles of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah the ahl the ahl bid'ah those people of innovation and desires are divided into two uh, or bid'ah in general is invite is divided into two categories bid'ah mukaffara wa bid'ah ghair mukaffara bid'ah mukaffara refers to those deviant innovations in the religion which take a person outside of the fold of Islam for example those extreme people who go to the grave sites and they supplicate to the dead asking the dead to relieve their anxiety or asking the dead to help and assist them in their daily life or what have you that this is bid'a mukaffara because it's shirk and it's the uh, shirk al-akbar which takes a person out of the fold of Islam so people who are doing that have fallen into bid'a mukaffara those innovations which take a person out of the fold of Islam or another example would be those people who sacrifice to the dead or what have you because sac sacrificing a dhabh is a type of ibadah as a as a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in an ayat in the salati wa nusuki wa mahyayu wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen that verily my prayer and my sacrifice uh, in the salati wa nusuki wa, mah wa mahyayu wa mamati and my life and my death is for rabbil alameen is for Allah the Lord of the worlds. Letting us know that sacrifice of dhabh, a nusuk, those things are a type of worship that only belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, sacrificing or uh, going to the grave, supplicating to them and asking them, asking the dead, regardless of whether you're at the graves or not, or asking people to do things which they are, it's impossible for them to do. So if you ask, even if it's your mother and you say, Oh, my mother, please make it rain today. Please uh, make my wife fertile so she can have a, a child. Or please uh, take me to paradise. These are things she has no ability to do. So this would be shirk. This would be shirk. Because you're asking her to do something which is absolutely impossible. She's unable to fulfill. And these things are only Allah, things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can fulfill. The other category of bid'ah is bid'ah ghayr mukaffara. And this is the innovation which does not take a person out of the fold of Islam. For example, new types of dhikr. As long as it doesn't have shirk, yet, shirk in it, polytheism or something like this. Then this is, uh, if it's something that the Prophet ﷺ didn't do and his sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in didn't do. Then this could fall into the category of bid'ah ghayr mukaffara. Innovation which does not take a person out of the fold of Islam or um, celebrating the Prophet وسلم, his birthday, for example, the Molid. This is bid'ah ghayr mukaffara. As long as you are not worshipping the Prophet وسلم, and going beyond the bounds and falling into shirk and practices of kufr, then this would be an innovation which is a sin, a major sin, but it does not take a person out of the fold of Islam. That person is a, a Muslim who is doing innovation who's doing a very serious sin. And may Allah protect us from those sins. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and from all sins. And forgive us of our sins. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So, getting back to the point at hand, 
as we said, bid'ah is of two types. That takes you out of the fold of Islam and that which does not take you out of the fold of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ warned about following and listening to the dua to Jahannam. Those people who called it the hellfire. And that hadith or those people who called to the hellfire can fall into either or the, either one of those categories. Either they could be calling you purely to the hellfire, meaning they're calling you, they're outside of the fold of Islam and they're calling you to shirk and kufr and zandaka. Okay, they're calling you to worship and, uh, 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 you know, other than Allah or calling you to uh, rule to a whole nother system outside of Islam with no relation to Islam and believing that that is better than the Sharia or equal to the Sharia or what have you. Or it could be something, and, and those things taken as outside of the full Islam, or they could be calling you to something which is just deviant, deviant practices, negating some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat, or making ta'wil, making a, a new understanding, or explaining the Quran, or explaining the sunnah according to their opinions, instead of going back to what the salaf of this ummah were upon. And that's what I wanted, want to discuss, is that beware of those people who call you, who give new tafsir of the Quran. Tafsir that was not known to any of the mufassireen before us. Tafsir and explanations that were not known to the Salaf of this Ummah. And, and for the sake of modernism or the sake of the, trying to make it a, uh, some sort of uh, uh, comparison or, or an analogy or what have you between the, uh, the Quran and science or Islam and science. Beware of those people who their dawah is built upon that. Beware those people whose dawah is built upon that. That doesn't mean we don't need science to prove the Qur'an. We have the Qur'an. We believe in the Qur'an. And the Qur'an affirms for us. There are some scientific things. But the problem is, is when you get into scientific theories and so forth, those things, a lot of times they're theories. Some are neg they're negatable. They're, you, you test them, it's a hypothesis. And you can only prove a hypothesis wrong is one of the principles that they always uh, discuss in, in scientific circles, that you disprove a hypothesis. So it's best left to contemplate the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeing the beauty of his ayat, but don't go beyond the path of the salaf of this ummah. Just leave it. You're safest in your religion. Because once you embrace a theory and try to prove it by the Quran and then you find out 10 years later 20 years later that theory was false or there's doubt into that theory then that causes you the weak one to, to have doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen another important thing many of these du'at they may seem that they're calling to good but some of them their da'wah is only entertainment based they only make you laugh and they joke with some ahadith and some ayats in between. Some of them, they explain the Quran and the Sunnah and those verses and those hadith that deal with uh, prophecy about the future from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us from the Quran and the Sunnah and they try to apply it to our modern day setting with little knowledge with little knowledge that doesn't the Quran and the Sunnah is relevant for all time but do not be of those people whose dawah is based on saying the Dajjal has one eye well look at the dollar bill with the eye the symbol eye and the Illuminati and this one and this no you have no knowledge about that you have no knowledge about that so do not bring that a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion because the salaf of this ummah they stopped where the nusus stopped stop where the text stopped and be aware I'm not saying be, don't be aware of your surroundings but do not try to make analogies make qiyas based on falsehood based on your opinion well I think that this is the Dajjal is in China because of this or I think the Antichrist is this, and I think Masih is this, and I think this is this. No, leave it, leave it. 
based on Kitab Allah, was Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Fahim of the Salaf of this Ummah, and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, the, the pious predecessors, beginning with the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. That is imperative to establish. Let's hear this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in regards to this, in regards to those uh, modern day people who preach and call and gather the youth together with their uh, their exposés of the Illuminati and their exposés of this and exposés of this and that and the other. Let's see where their dua, their, what the Prophet ﷺ said about those people who speak without knowledge, who call to something and try to cloak it in Islam. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal so yukunu fi akhir ummati unasun yuhadithunakum ma lam tasma'u antum wala aba'akum fa iyyakum wa iyyahum wafi sahih al-bukhari an Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha ana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tila hadhihi al-aya هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة فما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيأتبيون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويل وما يعلمون تأويله إلا الله وراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا بال... آمنوا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولى الباب الله سبحانه وتعالى says or for, with the first hadith which is the main point that we wanted to mention, is the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that uh, Imam Baghawi uh, collected this, fi, uh, fi tafsir al-Quran, or Imam Baghawi in Shara Sunnah, uh, collected this hadith, the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the, mes on the, nes the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, there will be a people in the last part of my nation, you know, that will come later in my nation, that will speak to you about things that you never heard about, nor your fathers. Beware of them and warn against them. That right there gives us an idea on how we should be when we hear strange things. We hear people going, making mubalagha. They're going beyond the bounds. They're not sufficing themselves with the peop what the people who came before us came with. But rather they go beyond the bounds in their explanation. Saying, oh, in the last day it's going to be like this and it's going to be like this. No. It's better not to speculate and, and go, go, try to go beyond the text. Go with that beneficial knowledge, that which is going to help you get to Jannah. But speculating and theorizing and, and, and trying to relate the nusus to what you believe is happening around you in the world. This is something that can be very dangerous and we leave it to the scholars, those people who have ilm, a rasikhun of ilm. Those people are well grounded in the knowledge of the religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulli su wa makru. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and give us ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and protect us from the dua to jahannam. Those people who deceive the Muslims, misguide the Muslims, calling the Muslims to things that have no relation to the salaf of this ummah. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم